Hey, it must be the best day of the week. Ah. Welcome to What If Wednesday. Two weeks into the year. I don't think we've claimed the day yet, but we are trying. Yes. <laughs> We're working on I had that conversation actually with somebody this morning. I said, happy What If Wednesday. And they looked at me like I was crazy. And then I had to go back and say, no, no, no. It's a whole thing. We're trying to claim a day of the week for the world. And uh, yeah, I don't think they believed it could happen, but anything could happen right war already has thursday so we want wednesday i don't know <laughs> well, one out of seven we're not asking for too much no not even the whole day a piece of it just just the middle just the middle part where we're going to grow your business and make you see things you never saw make business growth easy effortless fun i think we deserve a, a week we deserve a whole month but we're just asking for one part of a day but anyway Enough about our stupidity. Welcome in to the No Name Show. For hopefully the last time, if you were tuning in last week, you saw that uh, we, we put it out there. We need to name the show. The Inner Circle Preview Show is not doing it anymore. So, Sean, we're actually going to start there this week. Before we dive into sales and marketing and why they're on the same team, we're going to cause some scuffle in the business world today. But I want to put some names out there. You get a vote. I get a vote. The people get a vote. And let's well, see. I don't like giving the people a vote. That sounds. What the people people are why we're here. <clears throat> well, the people, individuals are why we're here. People. Yes. No one of us is as dumb as all of us. <clears throat> we certainly don't want a committee coming up with this. But uh, go ahead. Yes, let's open it to the people. All right. You know let's what? See. Why not? Democracy. Let's see. Yes. Gotta let's love democracy. People. It's an election let year. People have their say. Well, we are campaigning for a day of the week. So I believe in having the people vote and, uh, you know, we're, we're running a democracy here. All right. So I put them on the screen. These are some of the names that we came up with um, slash my AI friend came up with. But I don't know. They might be good. They might give us some direction. So, Sean, looking at these, do you have do you have a favorite that stands out to you? Well, business beyond chaos. But business whispers is creepy. Dream business blueprint. Yeah, my microphone the whole episode. The bit what? Spurring the microphone. Yes, it's about business. It's really creepy. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <no. laughs> unless unless you're like a eighty something year old president whispering during speeches, and then that's terrifying. It's even creepier than creepy. All right, uh, so that's bad. The what is effect? No, there's a lot of effects, and we don't know. No, it could be, yeah, okay. So I'm not adding things to the mix, but of these, biz, business beyond chaos, maybe. Business bites. Business bikes? Bites, bites. Bites. They're tiny bites. little bites. These are tiny little tiny bites, little business yeah, bites. before okay. the thing. I don't know. We'll add it to the list. We'll take out the business whispers. We'll, we'll add, add business bites to the list. <laughs> I like well, two or three. Why should I have any say in it? <laughs> Don't ask me. You're just the guy showing up and doing it. <laughs> I like two and three. I think if I had to pick from this list, the you know four is okay, but the business architect. We have an architecture. I've never heard anybody else describe that in terms of a business model. So we talk about harmonious, the harmonious architecture. But the business architect. That's about me. That's not about the thing. This is, this is you interviewing me each week. This is a preview of what we're doing in the room. So it's a snippet of it. It's the snippet, mm. it's the piece, it's the portion, it's the snapshot, it's the window in, it's the, this is the essence of what it is. What is it? It's a sneak peek preview kind of window into a thing. It's bite-sized little chunks of light. They're sparks. They're sparks. Okay. Well, for those of you except watching, I was gonna use, except we're using sparks for the, the little, yeah, the short clips. clips that we're doing with our luminaries. So they're not sparks. This is more than a spark. It's longer than a spark. Hmm. Is that a thing? It's longer than a spark and smells better than a note. That we're gonna think sense. about it. A force and senses. We'll see what happens. We'll go with maybe one of these, maybe not. Put it in the comments if you like one of these. We'll take your votes because. Quite frankly, uh, we're not really that tied to the name of the show, <laughs> but I think it should have a name and it should live somewhere and have a, uh, a format. It. So power. 
Names have power. So I'm leaning towards number two then. Business beyond chaos. I think that's what we do. We calm the chaos for our for our clients. We do that. We do that. We do do that. And speaking of calming the chaos, since I said it, in case you want to comment, calm the chaos in your business, we have workshops. Once a month, we have one coming up. Uh, whenever you're listening to this, head over to whatif.com slash chaos. We'll help you take the first step to calm the chaos in your business. It starts here. It starts at this. It's a three-day thing. You really can't get any simpler than that. It's the first step to regaining control of your calendar, your time, your serenity. We'll dive more into that. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun, though. I hope you join us there. Yes. All right. Go. Enough. Enough about this. Pick your name for right now. It might be the Business Beyond Chaos show. We'll figure that out by next week. It will have a name by next week, and we will have beautiful graphics. But this week, we're talking about sales and marketing and why they're on the same team, but why most people do not put them on the same team. Most big corporate environments and even small businesses think about sales and marketing as actually two separate activities. What's your experience with this? Yeah, I don't, I don't, <clears throat> well, I don't know if I would say it's most, but I would say that there are enough people who put them in two different places that it's kind of like the extension, the extended version of what we talk about already, which is that corporate business is a siren song towards the rocks because we think that we as entrepreneurs, we're, we're desperate for some kind of clarity. We're, sink, we're, we're in a sea of content, but what we really need is context. So if you can't figure out a context for ourselves and we can't have an architecture handed to us to say, here's how to make sense of all these disciplines, because they're all important to varying degrees. If we can't have that and the links between them to leverage it, we're lost. We're piecing it together. We're hammering together something that with different prophets and gurus and owners of silos and stakeholders in the, across the quilt of disciplines that people have set claim to space and say, well, I'm a sales expert. Well, I'm a marketing expert. I do this particular thing in marketing. This, these particular things work. And we know that if all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. And so we've been told some outrageous things over the, both of our experiences getting here. And everybody listening to this has been too. This is the place. This is the space. This is the tool. I was coached in a, in a very well-meaning mastermind with very savvy people that if I didn't get my space staked down on Clubhouse, I was being, I was, I was just missing the boat. This was it. Are you kidding me? You've got to be on Clubhouse. It's the only, it's going to be the only way to get any word out, do any kind of marketing. Well, that's, that of course was ludicrous at the time they said it and it's ludicrous now. And there might be people here who never even, Clubhouse came and went so fast, they might even know it was a thing. Um, so you have to be careful when you lean into a silo too much. And so for marketing, if somebody thinks, yeah, but I don't really want to focus on the sales part. Well, they're, they're, it's like any doctor who needs a special specialization, but good doctors don't say, well, you don't need the rest of it. I'm a heart surgeon. So everything's going to come back to your heart. Well, but I might have a kidney problem. Fuck your kidneys. <laughs> the hearts are where it's at. You can't live without it, can you? Well, no, you're right. I, I can't. You wouldn't do things that damage your heart, would you? Right. Right. I mean, how long are you live without a heart? You can live without a kidney for a little bit. But a heart? You're dead in like, like that. Okay, well, I guess it's all about the heart. I guess I'm going to leave in a, lean into the heart. The heart's the thing. You're right. Screw my kidneys. Well, you wouldn't. A doctor wouldn't do that. They understand there's other things. This is just my specialty. But the whole discipline, the whole organism needs to be respected same is true of your business the same is true of the architecture that supports your business whether you know it's there or not the 10 fundamental mental disciplines are there and must be addressed and so when we're talking about marketing and sales i don't want people who are staking a claim on their spot to confuse us to think that they are separate things, especially if we're looking at that siren song, that glowing, shining place on the hill of a 
Fortune 50 company where if they're that big and that powerful and that well known, they must know what they're doing. And they have sales and marketing separated. I've seen it where the departments are separated and actually incented towards divergent activities. These people have are are trying to get the best bonus they can at the end of the year and their bonus is they are incented on different things than these people. I've seen it. The sales team over here, they need to do A, B, C, and D in order to get the biggest bonus. And these guys get paid on something different. And of course, when we sit down to do corporatized strategic planning, nobody can set their sales target targets because finance has a different goal. Sales has a different goal and marketing has a different goal. And somehow we think that in com having them competing against each other while saying, hey, come on, guys, we're all on the same team here, right? <laughs> Bullshit, my kids don't eat if they get their bonuses. And this is how we've set this up. So I don't recommend you separate the activities because there is a cycle of taking people, we know this as entrepreneurs, from unaware to raving fan. And there is a path through that there is a life cycle of that customer going from not even knowing about you at all to becoming an extension of your sales force because they love you so much they're referring you left and right and that journey is the same no matter where you are no matter what kind of business you're in and that involves sales and marketing the essence of both combined into one plan and one set of activities yeah, so let's let's uh, dissect this a little bit. I've I've made some bold claims in this area on on our podcast, Harmonious at Lunch, which also might need a rebrand because I don't love the name. But anyway, different topic for a different day. Speaking of ubiquity, um, th this is the area I love to hate. Ubiquity is the discipline that I absolutely love to hate because everyone in the world on Facebook is a marketing specialist to some degree, and they all argue that they're singular focus and tactic is the one that will grow your business while throwing away the rest of the discipline. So let's just put that out there. You know how I feel about it now, but I understand how important it is. This is I made, all you'll need. Yes. And I just this can't, I can't stand right. hearing that it's, it ruins so many entrepreneurs who then get jaded about trusting people, sharing information online. We're here to expose it, shine the light and actually bring truth to growing your business. So one of the claims I made recently was, um, it was more of a question, not a claim, but what if you could eliminate your sales department entirely and not even worry about that as a, as a separate function? I'm not saying sales is not important, like the function of sales, but the, the analogy, not the analogy, the, um, the example I gave was Tesla. And this is how you can think about why sales and marketing are not two departments and actually one process and one discipline. I don't know if you've ever bought a Tesla. I have not, but I've been on their website. You do not need to go to a dealership. You don't need to talk to anybody. You can go buy a car online and a car is not a small purchase. I'm not talking about a $10 item on Amazon. I mean, they've eliminated a sales team almost entirely and they are the biggest, if not the biggest, one of the top three biggest companies in the world. So that right there is a question that may disrupt the way you feel about sales versus and sales and marketing. How do, your thoughts on that, Sean? I hope it does disrupt it because well, it should be disrupted <laughs> because they have to be understand uh, understood together. I'm telling you that at the biggest of companies, they have... That's one of the things, the things I have to solve for them is there is drag there. There is uh, a cacophony of sound. It's not harmonious. And we have to come in and, and bring the discipline back together. And it's just much smoother. And, and Elon Musk has figured it out. Other companies have figured it out. Other Fortune 50 companies have figured it out. And entrepreneurs know it, especially the solopreneur, because they're like, yeah, I've got to do this whole thing in a sequence. Makes sense to me. Yeah, because while you're aspiring, aspiring to be some CEO of some big giant company, they don't understand what you, the entrepreneur, understand because you have to do it all right now. And you're understanding there is a life cycle here and there married together. Now, I'm not saying we have luminaries who specialize in individual parts of the marketing and sales process. 
But those luminaries are in our room because they understand, yes, I am that doctor who's talking about the heart, but I'm absolutely going to look at the report from your kidney doctor. They know how to play together and how to leverage the disciplines. So while we have luminaries who say, I only talk about the sales part, she talks about the marketing part. And she talks about the connections from sales and marketing to the other disciplines across the business because she understands the architecture and where it fits in and honors that. And would never say, I'm all you need to 10x in your business. Good Lord. 11x. Safe harbor laws, please. I mean, <laughs> you cannot. Don't make those statements. Don't make claims like that. It's not true. And it is pumping into that confusion and that lack of context for people because they now think this is all they need. And the rest is, well, sure. You need that other stuff, but we're not going to focus on that. It's just this one thing. They're trying to get people to hyper leverage one aspect of their business, and it's going to result in potentially an uptick in them getting clients into a broken system, into a broken company. And they're going to actually, they could, if they're successful with how they market that to people and people buy into that thing, that could actually blow up their business if they're not careful about the rest of the architecture and honoring that. So that's why we're very careful about who we bring in here who are specialists in the disciplines because they've got to know this is del a delicate balance. And, and we, as the owners of the architecture, understand it and can honor it and help them honor it vis-a-vis -vis the avatars. that. We well. Yeah, the, the visual I always like to use with people is of a wheel. So if you were to picture the 10 disciplines that we talk about that fall in harmonious, 10 spokes on a wheel. If you only focus on expanding one of them, your beautiful circle now has a point on one side. How, how would that wheel turn efficiently if you have spikes all over it? It's, it's obviously not. It needs to be gradually expanded together. And that's where the interplay with the 10 disciplines comes in and why we get so frustrated and why we're harping on the people that say, no, just this one. Well, if you do that, you stretch it out so far that the rest of the thing snaps and falls apart. And I think that's, it's just a visual way to picture what we're talking about. So transitioning from, okay, that's clearly the problem. Guy goes, now, into, guy goes into a pizza place and says, then it says, give me a whole, whole cheese pizza. I'm, it's my birthday. I'm going nuts. I never eat like this. Give me a whole cheese pizza. The guy says, all right, you want me to cut it in six, eight or 10 slices? And he goes, oh, six, I could never eat 10. Okay. So <laughs> I digress. <clears throat> because we get that sometimes with why does the architecture look the way it is? I don't want to deal with all these disciplines. Well, it's all there. I can cut it into six if you'd like, but it's the whole thing. It is more consumable as 10. And we understand what we're doing. We understand how the pieces are part of a whole and you're eating the whole thing anyway. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, that's, that's funny. People do that <laughs> all the time. I'm on a, I'm on a diet. I don't want the whole thing. I just want smaller pieces of the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. that's the problem is we've identified that. Uh, what's what's the solution? We have like five minutes left and we're going to jump into the inner circle room here um, and really dissect this. But in terms of ubiquity, what's what's the start to solving this problem? How can we look at it differently, first of all? And then what what's the first step? Well, so the funny thing about ubiquity and by ubiquity meaning that is our new definition of marketing and sales which means not the not being everywhere for to all people all the time because when you sell to everyone you sell to no one we're talking about being all the places that your avatar expects to find you when where and how it matters so we and we break down that is a loaded statement we're actually going to spend all day today in the room talking about the when, the where, and the how, and then the life cycle of totally not even aware to you to raving fan and what that the nine boxes of that are. Because inside the we know architectures and frameworks give us context in a sea of content. We need a structure in order to be able to put all the things we're hearing from all these different gurus and expert, experts, all these beautiful tools that are out there. If it's just a pile of stuff on our desk, we can't use it. So inside of our architecture, 
we have an architecture for ubiquity that says here is how you can plot out your strategic allocation of resources towards bringing someone from totally unaware of you to a raving fan and plotting that out over the next quarterly sprint the next year so you have a system you've now systematized your marketing and sales and where does it start like with all things in navigation which is our new word for strategic planning because if we don't know what your core values and your mission and your vision is mostly for mark for ubiquity core values and mission i don't know who you are and who you're talking to and so until we figure that out it's very hard to target your ideal avatar for a particular piece of messaging around a particular offer. You can't do that without that. And so we're always taking people back to navigation, at least to kick the tires on it and say, now let's take that piece that we did over here that we needed for so many other of the disciplines around hiring people and motivating people and leadership and, and protection and change management, all those things driving off of your mission, vision, and core values. So too, is your marketing and sales, what we call ubiquity. And that plan will be better for having done the first part. So it all goes back there. And the only way to have an understanding of the entire system is to first start with the bad, the business architecture diagnostic that in eight minutes will help you analyze your business across all 10 of the disciplines. It'll give you the architecture. It'll give you our take on it. It'll give you what we say, hey, if you've answered these things, this is probably what your business looks like. And here would be the next steps for you. Good God. That is a $90,000 offer. That's free. I, we ask eight minutes of your time. If you can't give me eight minutes of your time for that. But please don't even watch these because you're wasting everyone's time. Let's get to the action takers. Please, Brandon, um, are we on time? Did I fit that in? We we are actually I want to share a story because you know how we made fun of people for making outrageous earnings claims 10 and 11 xing your your earnings. Um, you potentially just made an outrageous claim of saying it's worth $90,000. Guess what? I this morning have nearly to the dollar how that played out. So let me tell you this quick story. Then we're going to wrap up and go to the room. This is this is how amazing things are. So we had a client, a partner we're working with in an, an investor who's looking at investing in different companies, bringing them on into their portfolio, managing them. And, you know, it's it's a whole investment company. Very cool. We'd be their fractional COOs and it's going to be a beautiful partnership. We're very excited for it. We had one of their potential acquisitions take the bad because business owners say their company's amazing. And maybe that's not always the case. We are, I was able to get on with her and dissect the report based on what he had told her about his business. I'm leaving names and, and specifics out of this on purpose. If you want to come into our room, we share full details. But oh well, yeah, everyone's NDA. It's great. That's amazing. <laughs> All so, the <laughs> so we go through this, and you know, he's saying his business is fantastic, but the numbers are not being pieced together. The thing, the math isn't mathing, if you will. So we get through this, and she, I think there was an offer on the table for. Uh, in the mid, mid uh, hundred thousand dollar range, hundred fifty ish thousand dollars, we were able to establish basically that uh, this company was maybe worth fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So I I was able to negotiate down her offer by literally ninety thousand dollars just because of that one eight minute assessment. If that doesn't sell you on how much clarity I can give you into your business by taking that and having a thirty minute follow up call with me, I think you're crazy and we're going to go see you in the inner circle. Bye. <laughs> see you next time on the no name show, which will have a name next week. Excited for you to come back. Make sure you vote. Go watch the beginning of this episode. If you missed it, put your vote in the comments, wherever you're watching and who knows, maybe we'll pick your answer. And if we do, right. we'll bring you on the show. We'll, we'll feature you on this amazing podcast that we have. That, so I, like. On. that I like, let's offer them a gift. Name All right, show. Sean, let's do it. Let's go serve our people and build some businesses. Later.